going on YouTube working on the 97 Ford Ranger um, anyway getting ready to replace the speedometer uh, drive gear because it's not really for the actual speedometer but it's actually for my odometer uh, this thing stopped at 174,490 I'll say six and a half, or no, five and a half. Um, might as well say five and a half, because it ain't that six. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is the worm gear right here. Uh, part number C82001. Got it for AutoZone. Cost about 50 bucks. Yeah, I know, I could have probably went online and got one cheaper. But here a couple years ago, I was going to replace this anyway. And online was wanting to charge about 50 bucks. So I just didn't even want to deal with it. Been a while since I've actually replaced, or tore this dash apart. Uh, so we're going to give it another try today. And plus I need to clean up my... Uh, speed in my cluster but this is what it consumes of your worm gear and the drive gear and if these things get brittle and normally the worm gear is usually the one that gets brittle sometimes the drive uh, drive gear also gets brittle and end up breaking uh, inside to where your odometer don't want to work no more so today we're going to replace that I'm sure probably going to be dealing with a little bit of electrical half inch uh, wrench and we'll loosen up the battery cable here, take it off so there's no power getting to anything. Come up underneath the dash. You have bolts. It has also a uh, Torx bit style on them. You can use a socket or you can use a torch bit. But you're going to have one here. You're going to have one there. But the first thing you want to do is remove these two first to remove your. Uh, hang on a minute. Try and get. Ah, there we are. So we can uh, take this down first and then we can remove the other two bolts under here. And you just kind of want to look up underneath here, make sure that there is nothing else in the way. And if I'm not mistaken, I think, yeah, I had to repl uh, take that down too, I believe. So we'll do that too as well. And those should probably be the same size. T20 or a seven millimeter. Seven millimeter will work. If you can find uh, one in standard, uh, those bolts down there are also standard as well. Uh, I'm using a seven millimeter because right now I can't even find the small version of the standard for that. But the seven millimeter will work to get those uh, bolts out. All right, so I've got my uh, hood pop and my e-brake removed down. Took the two bolts from underneath We'll come up here and should be able to just pop it out. Yep, you just pop it out because there's like little clips. Okay, so be careful, very careful because yours may end up being dry rotted, may not be. Uh, last time I took this thing off, the little tab, clear up, this little tab right here broke off on me. But as long as these tabs don't break, you're good. Just kind of pull it and it'll come off just kind of set that over there to the side I don't know why my freaking phone keeps blurring and I also try to keep my uh, bolts and stuff together so that way I kind of know exactly where they go go back now under here if I'm not mistaken I think these were I think those were eight yeah these here are gonna be eight millimeter and you can see that you got one there you have one there, one there. You have one over here, you have one over here, and 
you have one up here and this here will pull down now I just want to kind of mention too if you've got a drill I don't well I do but I don't have the, the uh, gadgets or the connectors or whatever to hook on the socket but if you've got a drill uh, put it on low low torque and you can actually run these out with a drill make it a little bit faster that way you're not sitting here tearing your arms up trying to get these things out of here because these bolts are pretty long well they're not too bad but you can see how long they are it's crazy that they put long bolts and stuff like this i mean like they like it's going to go anywhere like really anyway just kind of suggestion on that one okay so now since you got this far seven millimeter <clears throat> uh seven millimeter you may want to remove your bezel around your radio if all possible and you should have two bolts or two screws under here but i don't they got lost so i can just pull that completely out um now you may end up like if you've got something here you may end up having a wire or something that you may have to disconnect or something from here uh but i just use just kind of move it out of the way just a little bit and then i can get to also these three you'll have uh three i think these are seven millimeter too yeah they are so you'll have uh, three of those going across here and all this you might want to pull your knob off but we'll get through all this all you gotta do is just kind of just pull it out some yeah there we go I'm trying to see what i'm doing then trying to look through the camera all at the same time i'm getting ready to put this thing on a toggle eventually and actually remount it uh, but that'll be on another day Okay, so you got that removed out. And then you just want to take a hand here, down here, when you get this side popped off, hand there, and a hand back in here, and it'll pop off and down at the bottom. You just kind of want to work it. push in a little bit push out now beware too because you also have connectors here that has to be pulled out so I'm gonna get that real quick also want to be careful that you also hold this and mine's broke down here uh, here a while back but you might want to hold this and use a screwdriver and just kind of pry around and slowly loosen that uh, connector out there's also a tab here that you're going to have to push in and it'll pull out just be careful because this thing is very brittle in here uh, i mean like even like right here plastic starting to get old i may end up eventually replacing this here eventually uh, later on but today i'm not going going to because Right now I'm just trying to get into the cluster and show y'all how to get in here and uh, get all this stuff done. And your uh, hazard signal, push that down and just remove your bezel the rest of the way. Um, this clip that's back here, you'll have to get a flathead screwdriver and prise it up right there on this piece and take your other hand and move it out of the way. And then once you do that, you can just remove the bezel piece and set it off to the side. Now, you're off in here. And I want to say, I think all these are 7 two. Yeah, they are. You have a bolt here. You got a bolt here. You got a bolt there and you got a bolt down there. And this here will 
move out and I think you'll have a couple little plug-ins back there as well all right so once you got this step just grab it and pull it out end up having to also remove no you won't you just have to turn it around and undo all your plugs up here once you remove this bottom plug and this top plug this will just pull out you got a, another connector here to pull out and that is actually the last connector and then this will be fully and completely removed out of the way and that's all there is to it you can bring it over to your workbench or your table or whichever and you have these little torx bits all around here now you you may end up having a seal or something uh, on this I don't think mine did because like I said I've took all this I've took this whole thing apart before and cleaned inside uh, and everything so and then like I said, if you wanted to change your light or your bulbs and stuff to LED come on here which way is it turn there it is They're a little bit hard to turn but if you want to change your bulbs to LED, you can at this point, if you want to, you don't have to. But if you want to just kind of add a little bit more accent and stuff to your, uh, you know, your cluster and stuff, you can do that. And these here are also going to be a T15, real tiny. All right, so now once you got all your little screws and stuff out, top cover just comes right on off of here. And... Think, like I said, I think there is also a seal that's back here that you may end up having to uh, break. Hang on a second. Okay, I think I remember now how I did this once before. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've been in this thing. Be very careful not to break anything, but um, you want to prise up back here. And you'll want to use both hands because these things are in there. Once you get this thing out, see it's got prongs. That sits in those terminals and just pulls out and if i'm not mistaken i think that's the way it is for all of them like i said i could be wrong but like i said it's been a while since i've been in here and i think it is that set up that way uh looks like this one here's got a tab but i'll get it all pulled apart and stuff and uh run run through everything okay yes i do remember now Pull this side, pull that side, pull this side, and then the center will come off. You have to pry it a little bit because, like I say, you got little prongs and stuff. Uh, now you're also messing with, like I say, you're also messing with electrical components. Um, if you got a pair, well, you got to be careful of static because it will shut, uh, short out these uh, these boards and stuff, electrical boards, motherboards. Any electrical static can short these out. Any anything that's computer, anything that's got a motherboard will short out if anything static electricity is near it or anything like that. It will happen. So be very very careful. Uh, you have two of these bolts here. Looks like you may end up having a bolt here. Yep. And those are, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think these were the. 732s? No quarter? One of them are the five and a half. Hang on a second. Let me go find the right. I think it's the quarter though, if I'm not mistaken. It's not the five. Hang on a second. Let me go find my sockets. Okay, so I found the socket. So it was a five. My bad. You want to remove these. I'm going to have my fiance go down there to the store because. I don't have a socket small enough for these little bitty teeny tiny bolts. I don't even know what size they are. It's crazy that the dealership puts 
small little bitty teeny tiny socket or bolts in something like this it's crazy but they are uh, but they are little teeny tiny bolts um, or screw bolts you know but I don't know what size they are but anyway I kind of wanted to show y'all something if y'all can look right there hang on a second let me see see if I can get this thing a little bit clearer I don't know why this thing keeps blurring on me though. There it is. You can see a little black piece in there. I know it's kind of hard to see. Right there. My screwdriver's touching. That piece right there. That's that little worm gear. And that thing has, now you can really see it laying down there. That attaches up here to this motor and uh, so and when that motor turns that little worm gear fits on that gear tooth right there it turns your speedo or uh, not your speedo but your odometer oh there it went fell out there it is and these things dry rot you know they get old they get brittle they dry rot and they're gonna be replaced. And it's crazy that something so small as 50 bucks. I'm sure I could probably get it online for a little cheaper. All right guys, well I hate to cut this thing short. Uh, I'll have to come back and make a part two. I went through all my sockets and stuff. I cannot find my uh, socket that will fit these smaller um, bolts that goes in here to hold this motherboard in so probably gonna end up having to uh, call around or go to other parts stores and stuff and see if I can't find something because uh, I had her go and AutoZone don't carry nothing uh, so yeah I think it's it's almost a four but it's not quite it's a lot smaller than a four millimeter and I'm not even sure if it's even in standard uh, but I had a socket uh, almost close like this one here it's a whole lot smaller so I have no clue where it went so I'll probably end up having to go to the store and go get me one but anyway I'm gonna cut this short I'll come back with a part two on this video so y'all stay tuned